Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have x minus 3 to the power x squared minus 8x plus 15 all over x minus 2 equals 1. And we're going to be solving for x values. Now, when you have an exponential equation and you feel looking for real values, how do we solve it? So we're going to talk about different cases here. Let's look at it case by case. So if you have something like, let's say, a to the power b equals 1, then we have three cases. First case, b can be 0 and a can also be 0 because 0 to the power 0 is equal to 1. If you don't believe that, go ahead and check out my video right here. I also share a link in the description. Now, second case is where a is equal to 1 because 1 to any power is always 1. And in this case, back b can be any number, so it doesn't matter. We don't need to worry about it. And the third case is where a is negative 1 and b is even. So when these two con conditions are satisfied, something like negative 1 to the power 2 or 2n, if n is an integer, then this will always be 1. Make sense? Of course, we're thinking about it in terms of real numbers, because if we were thinking about complex numbers, then we would be at a different channel, right? That would be a plus bi. So if you're interested in complex numbers or you want to learn more about it, go ahead and check out my other channel. So to be able to solve this problem, we're going to go through each case. Let's go ahead and take a look. And then we can also kind of think about complex numbers if there's a way to find them. Okay, but our main focus is going to be on real numbers. So first case is b equals 0. b is the exponent. So we want x squared minus 8x plus 15 divided by x minus 2 to be 0. Okay, what does that mean? If a fraction is 0, then the denominator should not be 0 and the numerator should be 0. You have to satisfy two conditions. Well, some people disagree about 0 to the power of 0, which I strongly believe in, but uh, this has no argument. Like, there's no argument that 0 divided by 0 is undefined. Or some people call it indeterminate, but I think indeterminate is a better term because we don't know what it is. Anyways, so let's go ahead and write this down then. x squared minus 8x plus 15 should be 0 and... And means we're going to look at the intersection. x minus 2 should not equal 0. Obviously, the roots that come from here, 2 is not a solution to this. So we don't even have to worry about it. This is already satisfied. But what does this equation mean? That's quadratic and it's factorable. Think about it. You've got to find two numbers whose product is 15. And the sum of those numbers also must be negative 8. So those numbers are negative 5 and negative 3, which gives us the following factors. So from here, we can safely say that, okay, x is equal to 5 and x is equal to 3. So we got two solutions. Uh-oh. If x is equal to 3, we get 0 to the power 0. So let's go ahead and write down the original problem one more time. We have x minus 3 to the power x squared minus 8x plus 15 divided by x minus 2. So if x is 5, we're good because the Denom I mean, not the denominator, the exponent will be 0, so we're going to get something like 2 to the power 0, which is 1. That's good. But if x is equal to 3, then you get, you get 0 to the power 0. Is that equal to 1? I think it is. Some people don't accept that, but the majority thinks, I think, majority of people think 0 to the power 0 is equal to 1. Again, I made a video. I also shared the link in the description. Okay, I might also share it in the comment section down below if I don't forget. So, the first case basically gives us x equals 5 and x equals 3 as two solutions. Well, let's look at the second case. What's the second case? Second case is a equals 1, which is the base. So, if x minus 3 is equal to 1, that means x is equal to 4 then our equation will automatically be satisfied because if you raise 1 to any power, you'll, you'll always get 1. Is that also true when you raise it to a complex power? Yes, it should always be 1. And in this case, if you replace x with 4, you're going to get 
1 to the power any number. It doesn't matter, but let's evaluate it. 16 minus 32 plus 15, that's 31. That's a negative 1 over, uh, what is the x minus 2? That will be a 2. Now, you might be thinking, okay, if you think in the complex sense, 1 to the power negative 1 half kind of means 1 over 1 to the power 1 half, and 1 to the power 1 half is the square root of 1. But in the complex world, there are two square roots. But does this mean the principal square root? So is it only one or could it also be negative one? In that case, you know, x equals four will not be a valid solution. So something to think about. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section down below. Now we're, we're going to look at the third case. And then maybe we can also think a little bit about complex number cases, if possible. I don't even know. So we have the following equation again, x minus 3 to the power x squared minus 8x plus 15 divided by x minus 2 equals 1. What's the third case? The base is negative 1. And you want this to be even. Is that even possible, right? Even possible or is it oddly possible? Okay, let's go ahead and find out. If x minus 3 is equal to negative 1, add 3 to both sides, you get x equals 2. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. What is that problem? The problem is that makes the denominator 0. Therefore, this expression becomes undefined. Too bad x equals 2 is not a solution. It's not valid, even though it might... Well, in some cases it works, but in this case... It just doesn't. So, how many solutions we have? What are they? Let's go ahead and put it all together. So, we got 3 and 5 from the first case, and we got 4 from here. So, it looks like 3, 4, and 5 are all valid solutions. I know some people are not going to accept one of these solutions for 0 to the power 0, which is x equals 3. They're going to say like, oh, 0 to the power 0 depends on the context. No. It's an operation, a to the power b is an operation between two numbers, and it has a single answer. And it happens to be 1 in this case. Does that make sense? So don't go into different branches of mathematics or in combinatorics in blah, blah, blah. There are three ways to prove it, and I've done all of those in the video that I share with you. Okay? So go ahead and check it out, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. But don't keep saying 0 to the power 0 is undefined or indeterminate or whatever. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out A plus B I. And bye-bye.